Good evening, everyone. System Chalk here with the 128th episode of our first YouTube run through Book of Hours, playing as the artist. And uh, we're actually at the end of the day. <clears throat> so one of the things I wanted to do at the start before I... Like, so one of the challenges I run into with some of these more difficult... Um, uh, some of these more difficult skill ups is that I'll have to put things on hold for a little while while I... Um, while I, I work out what the memories are going to be. Now, the good news is I'm pretty sure I know what we need for pre preliminal meter. Um, I seem to remember we leveled this up not that long ago. But I figured what I'll do here is I'll talk a bit about what the game plan is going to be in terms of leveling that up. We have not... it's not that bad in terms of how much time we have left. But I do want to make sure that I'm keeping on top of these improvements because I do actually, I have five things to level up. And I do want to make sure that I have my elements of the soul and everything else sort of set um, and ready to go. Um, and then, of course, we're also going to have uh, whatever's coming at the, uh, out the other end of um, the Invisible Opera. So here's... Um, Here's what I'm going to focus on. Um, I'm not too worried about the Ragged Crossroads because really we had most of what we needed for that anyway. If I had, uh, let's say, Winter and Edge, we in fact would have leveled this up. We used the Hindsight, the Regret, and the Fear um, for the combination of Edge and Winter to get that up to level 3. You know, as it is, the uh, I didn't quite have I didn't quite have what it takes, so um, we'll, we'll set that aside. Um, what's going to be the bigger question is Preliminal Meter because I'm going to be taking that from level 6 to level 9. In fact, let's get that out of the way right now. There we go. And that means I'm going, at the end of this, I'm going to need to be able to generate 8 of the relevant memories, which are Knock or Rose. So the good news is, is that in terms of Knock, we've got Pattern, Salt, uh, Secret Threshold, and Stolen Secret. And then, of course, we have the Inescapable Confinement Newman. And on top of that, uh, for Rose, we have Intuition, Confounding Parable, and Gossip. So that's eight to start off with. Now, in terms of things that um, my followers can generate... Um, we have basically intuition, maybe stolen secret, and gossip. So three of those are available um, available to me through normal means. The rest need to be generated by um, by reading books, and that's not necessarily a hardship. Um, I, if as long as I know that I'm going to need to commit my elements of the soul towards that goal, I'm fine. Um, you know, I'm, I'm fine sort of dedicating myself towards that end. But um, that is going to raise a couple of questions for me in terms of what do I want to do with the characters. So, for instance, one of my plans was going to be to get uh, Reverend Timothy in for this Sly Slithering Fountain. Now, it doesn't take a whole lot to level up Reverend Timothy. Um, our plan for that was going to be to bring him in, use the Shap, use the Newman, and use the Sacrament Assite. So that's about two minutes of uh, activity all told. But it does take 45 seconds to get um, uh, to have a conversation with him. So he's maybe not the best source of memories. Now, I think probably the way that I can handle this is I will actually bring in Reverend Timothy so that we can use the sacrament assay. Uh, and then what I will do is I will also bring in Mrs. Kill specifically so that we can talk with her for the memories. Now, that obviously can happen later on in the day. I really don't care when I bring either character in. Um, now, again, it, it's not necessary for me to bring in Reverend Timothy. There are lots of things that I can do over the course of the day. But, oh yeah, actually, sorry, I just remembered there was another thing that I wanted to do uh, with this room, but we'll, we'll set that aside. That's not something I need to, um, that's not something that I need to follow up on right away. Um, so what I'm thinking about here... Um, We'll have two elements of the soul taken down, one Arab, one, um, I guess maybe Faust? Faust would be best um, to bring in Reverend Timothy. I've got, what is it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, so we have plenty to level up preliminal meter. 
So uh, the main goal is going to be to level up Preliminal Meter. But when Mrs. Kill generates memories for us, we'll take the we'll take advantage of, of anything that comes up on the side uh, to level up Ragged Crossroads. And then sort of at the end of the day, any remaining memories will just go towards generating the sorts of things that I need. Okay, no, I know I know how I'm gonna handle uh, handle the day. Um, so let's let the night pass. I'm not expecting to get that many lessons um, committed. We are opening, yes. I'm not expecting to get that many lessons committed tomorrow. Um, but if I get a chance to surprise myself, so much the better. The skill is now level 3. Its power aspects have also increased. Okay. So I do want to be careful here if... Um, so there's kind of a good news and bad news situation. If this finishes before dawn, then we'll get the Faust back. Oh, interesting. Okay, that kind of backfired on me. So maybe we don't worry about Reverend Timothy today. There's nothing forcing me to, to work with Reverend Timothy is the, the important thing here, so... Um, so yeah, we'll bring Mrs. Kill in. Mrs. Kill's mood always improves when I drop by. If you don't choose a topic, Mrs. Kill will offer help as a friend. Mrs. Kill stands ready to help. You always cheer me up, she says morosely. We'll start working with the manual labor right away. There's not much work on offer in Brankrug, but I can find sixpence worth of odd jobs uh, or add a coin to find visitors seeking employment. Now, the goal here is going to be to get Preliminal Meter leveled up. Now, no matter what happens, so the lowest, so the, the smallest number of elements of the soul that I need to, or sorry, of uh, memories that I need to generate. So that would assume that Mrs. Kill gives me a gossip, an intuition, and a stolen secret. Um, from there, I would need at least three elements of the soul. So what I think I'm going to do here is I'm just going to make my life a little bit easier, and I'm going to generate as many of the preliminal meter um elements that I need. And I'm going to ignore using the FET. So ideally what I'll do is I'll ignore the FET, the Arab, the Metal, and the Shapt. So I'm going to start with Trist, Core, and Health first. The reason why I'm doing that <clears throat> is that uh, Shapt, Arab, Metal, Wist, and FET are all things that I can use to level up um, preliminal meter or ragged crossroads. So I want a clearer idea of what I'm going to be able to do with the day before I start uh, giving up these these elements. So let's get started. We'll go with Ava's desk. Incidentally, I could have also used the Arab here, but I didn't want to give up something that could potentially generate some money for me. So uh, let's take the Trist. We will read uh, the Solomon Husher work. Okay, next up we want salt, so we can read at uh, the pale desk using health. So for this we will read the queen's turn. So we've got the Newman, I want a pattern next, so we can go to Natan of Regensburg's desk, or Natan's desk I suppose. Um, and we will read the radical measure. And I believe it is the secret threshold is the one that a visitor can't bring up. So that would be an almanac of entrances. All right, I've already mastered this, but I could reread it and perhaps recall a memory. Now, uh, again, the day will depend a lot on what else we get from Mrs. Kill. Um, and again, I, I may wind up doing something else uh, with the um, 
yeah, I may wind up doing something else with the elements of the soul. But right now, I think we're just going to, we'll see what the day brings us and then we'll move, we'll move forward. The Invisible Opera, a recording of a 1911 attempt at a performance of Wings, sorry, Wings Within Wings, the so-called Invisible Opera. The singers complete the skewbald aria, Beneath Our Skin and A Rose in Maya, without incident, but the Invisible Opera is dedicated to Ferizef the Magpie, who delights in unexpected interruptions. Uh, so I actually think Ferizref is a new bit of text. The recording ends with a clamor of horrified voices, a grating metallic screech, and a soft brass buzzing that fades into burning silence. So, also a cheerful ditty. More strings and songs, why not? Now this is a nice place to be actually because I'm going to be able to use the solace. Mrs. Kill stands ready to help. You always cheer me up, she says morosely. Mrs. Kill has seen more of the world than she usually lets on. Conversations with her yield the occasional surprise. So even though we're giving up the phosphor today, um, we're actually able to use the FET to um, to get the strings and songs that we needed. I've carried the memory like a flambeau safe through the mazes of night. This will complete once dawn has come. Okay. And a new room. The Smuggler's Den. In the last years of the 18th century, the DeWolf line ended and the estate lay empty. Enterprising smugglers spread rumors of the ghosts that walked the aisle and quietly brought their tea, brandy, and tobacco through the old mines on the seaward side of the aisle. But the remnants here are much newer than the 18th century. Perhaps even after the Curia took possession, they permitted the smugglers to use this place. Ambrose Westcott did love his backy so. Perhaps even the Suppression Bureau found the smugglers useful enough to turn a blind eye. So our common problem here, lots of packages to open. So we've got a crate of supplies and forsaken packages, no uh, books, but we have dandelion wine, Schloss Jannings, two bottles, Domaine Reveline, uh, two bottles, and Lambrig uh, Brosalinde. So... Um, I am going to want to catalog and I am going to want to open, but lessons first. So, uh, strings and songs. So this will go up two levels, so we will go to level four. And then level five. And again, because it... Oh, sorry, it's heart or sky curses. Okay. Uh, I'm going to need to bring back... I don't know why I thought it was a rose thing. Okay, but that's fine. I I can bring... I was going to bring back the core anyway. Okay, this is great. Uh, gossip. There it is and can be no tizzer. Mrs. Kill, as every local gossip knows, came from France to marry Mr. Kill, but there's scant trace of the continent in her accent now. So this is exactly the sort of outcome we were hoping for. Now again, the likelihood we're going to get a stolen secret out of this is is much lower, so I don't want to I don't want to rely entirely on Mrs. Kill. As I used to say in my youth, the day is done and so am I, but I've earned my pay. It is spring and the landlady has served me a slice of her stargazy pie with the pilgrimed heads poking cheekily through the hot crust. Okay. An almanac of entrances, a handbook of sealed and unsealed byways and shortcuts through the bounds compiled by Willem Harries in the 1860s during his term as librarian of Hush House. 
Harry's discusses the role played by the Legion de Sul and the Company of the Wolf in Gold in warding the Bounds against outside influences. He warns that Bounds travelers may themselves be considered outside influences. The Mansus, as Yees, lacks walls. Yees and the Mansus have both their gates, and there may be no gate without a wall. Thus the paradox resolves, as all those who walk and dream will learn. But the wood has neither gate nor wall, and so it is the wood whose roots may creep after us into the hours of our waking. So there's the secret threshold for preliminal meter. And we've got uh, Towards a Fundamental Aesthetic, or The House of Glass, Julian Cosley considered this his masterwork. Techniques for the perception and sorry, text techniques for perception and analysis, which permit invidious and apocalyptic conclusions. Possibly the most assiduously suppressed book in history. The entire run was destroyed. Even the presses were melted and dispersed, but the manuscript edition has survived. The perfect hegemony of the hours is perhaps eternal, but Cosley proposes and describes confinement inescapable, aesthetic and optical techniques which might contain even an hour, profoundly disrupting the order of the Mansus. He presents this as his own work, but there are hints here and there that he received inspiration or even assistance from the nowhere hour named Snow. The Queen's Turn, a 16th century translation of the Barrow Child's account of Lagia's turn, where Lagia, the Queen unsated, was offered the opportunity to enter the service of the Hours of the Triple Knot, as long as she repudiated her brother lover Antaios. Lagia accepts, set aside, setting aside the arts of the low red sun associated with Antaios. She bargains, however, for freedom for her daughters. The Hours of the Triple Knot accept casually, knowing that Lagia has devoured her daughters, but Wily Lagia has, uh, has decided, in the secret hollow of her heart, that she will adopt any who asked, if they can prove their fierceness. The traditions described here, the ones generally described as hill and hollow, are associated with Lagia before her turn, but now that she's a name of the Red Grail, they might also be safely used before an altar of the Triple Knot. So we talked a little bit before about this. Let me just um, get the last bit here. The Radical Measure, Manifesto for exper oops, Experimental and Dangerous Sounding uh, in, uh, Invocatory Poetry, written sometime in the 19th century by Dr. Aaron Peel. Notoriously inconsistent, and a notoriously inconsistent and incoherent text, apparently produced in a tearing hurry. The hours have little time for poetry, Dr. Peel averts, but they have a tremendous amount of time for poets. As the rose opens, Dr. Peel explains, an enduring memory opens on uh, to the horizon. This is a way of saying that something that cannot otherwise be said and is best only written with one's eyes firmly closed. Okay, so from Lagia's turn, there's a couple things to point out. So first of all, there is a reference here, aspect of the grail, Lagia, the queen unsated, one of the crueler aspects of the red grail, Lagia, the queen unsated, devouring mother, sister lover of Antaios, one tradition has it that Lagia took animal form so that she could satisfy her craving to devour her own children and go unpunished. Another, that the animal form was the punishment for her incest. The Grail has often been tolerant of contradictions. Perhaps her part in the intercalate really was, after all, a long and subtle move to undermine eternity. Or perhaps she's just not to be trusted. So when it says that we can use the rites of Hill and Hollow before the Altar of the Knot, this is one of the things I was referring to in terms of the secrets. Uh, what can I put in here? Fet, maybe? Reveal a treasure of the house. Make the proper invocations to the powers below the earth and reveal a treasure of the house. There was also one that talked about Tridesma Mahira. Um, now, I'm not going to do it here just because I do need the elements of the soul, but seeing as um, we read a book that was relevant to that, I figured I would, uh, I would point that out. Again, I want the... Um, I want to use my elements of the soul for something else. That is the only reason why I'm not taking advantage of that. Um, and that was something I probably had meant to do on Monday, but again, I have uh, lots of things to do. Okay, a storm. There it is and can be no tizzer. Mrs. Kill, as every local gossip knows, came from France to marry Mr. Kill, but there's scant trace of the continent in her accent now. So that's not too bad. That does put us on the path for more strings and songs, although we'll see whether or not it lasts. Mm. 
None of these help us with ragged crossroads or preliminal meters, so I'm happy to just leave them in place. I would like to get that leveled up sooner rather than later because it would be a shame if we overwrote some of the existing memories, but, you know, if it happens, it happens. Satisfaction. All right. <laughs> More for strings and songs. I'm not going to complain about that. Some appetites are easier to satisfy than others. It's actually kind of hard for me to decide what I want to give up. Better now. Okay, I think I'm going to restore the core in this case. Tuppence will buy me a hearty meal and a quiet place where I can rest and gather my thoughts. It is spring and the landlady has served me a slice of her stargazy pie with the pilkered heads poking cheekily through the hot crust. So here's what I'm thinking, right? We've got, um, we're going to need three and then four to level up strings and songs. So in terms of the three, we could do something like... Um, well, if I preserve the sunny and the cheerful Deddy and we use the satisfaction, solace, and storm, this is kind of tempting because uh, the sunny and the cheerful Deddy are not things that Mrs. Kill are going to generate. And the risk is that we don't get the two heart or sky items. But you know what? I have my own fix for that. So uh, that's exactly what I'm going to do here. I'm going to use the things that uh, can be uh, that can be repeated by Mrs. Kill. And that's just going to increase her usefulness as a um, as an assistant. Another fruit plucked from knowledge's tree. Improve the skill to level four. <laughs> Fair enough. So I, I protected myself from duplication, but the wrong kind of duplication. And you can kind of see the shift in terms of how we've approached the day now, right? We're not worrying about um, cataloging books. We're not worrying about reading new books. Right now, we want to work through the, the list that we currently have. And I don't necessarily know exactly where the day is going to wind up going, but I do have sort of broad strokes in terms of where I think I'm going to need certain things. So I'm pretty happy with, with where we are right now. Okay, more satisfaction. This is good. In fact, I'm tempted right now. I think... I will use, well, no, well, let's keep talking with Mrs. Kill, um, but I, I have an idea. I have an idea of how the rest of the day is going to work out. Better now. Okay, so core is good. Um, it doesn't really matter which of these I wind up restoring at this point. I'm just taking a minute to double check that that's correct. Yes. <clears throat> if I get a heart or a sky, I'm going to be over the moon. Uh, moth is the one thing that I don't need right now. I'm going to need to make some decisions in terms of what um, what memories I generate. In fact, what I'm going to do here... Um... Oh, I didn't go for a confounding parable. Okay. I'm going to generate a confounding parable now, and I'm going to use Wist for that. Because there's no way that Mrs. Kill is going to generate a confounding parable. And actually, the nice thing about that is a confounding parable could also be used for the um, strings and songs if it comes to it. I've already mastered this, but I could reread it and perhaps recall a memory. I'm 
just going to take a minute here. Um, actually, you know what? I don't need to get too clever with it. I'm just trying to think how I spend the last minute of the day. Um, that's such a shame. All right. Better now. Okay. So. I want to be pretty precise in terms of how I plan out the rest of the day. So in 18 seconds, I'm going to level up strings and songs. One, two, three, four, five, five of these. Okay, um, I'm going to make a curious hunch because I almost always neglect that and the impulse does nothing for me. Not enough knock. Shucks. Um, and I'd rather not use preliminal meter for this if I'm completely honest. Yeah, so no curious hunch is the, the headline there. Um, okay. Um, so one FET to level up preliminal meter, otherwise it's wasted. Uh, ragged crossroads. So we didn't get anything that we wanted out of that. Um, but it's also pretty straightforward for us to be able to... Oh, actually, you know what? Here's what I'm going to do. Um, uh, okay, so I'm overweight on the core. So this gets me strings and songs. Um, this gets me preliminal meter. This gets me ragged crossroads. So I generate a contradiction for Ragged Crossroads so that I can... I don't need to worry about Mrs. Kill doubling things up. already mastered this, but I could reread it and perhaps recall a memory. I'd like to regenerate the inescapable confinement. So I'll make money with the shaft, and then a little bit closer to the end of the day, I will use the Arab. Okay, inconvenient.
The Serenity of the Black Wood, an allegorical history of the House of Leith, which it is here implied was inspired by the centipede. Serrano Blackwood is an occult alias to this day. The proverbial footloose gathers travelers in a wood and leads them through, but abandons them part way. They find themselves beset by glorious monsters. The travelers discover they can survive if they close their eyes. They adopt a closed eye as their sign, and that they can go unnoticed if they drink from the clear cold streams. They never forget that proverbial footloose the centipede, but they never forgive her either. Okay, so I'm going to do this in a slightly different order than I had intended, but I'm content. So I'm going to level up preliminal meter first, and that's going to be so that I can get inescapable confinement again. That's going to be something that doesn't expire overnight, so I'm going to start reading it now because I'll have a full minute. <clears throat> After that, then we level up um, Strings and Songs, and then Ragged Crossroads. The thread parts, the weave is empty, the sky is cry out. So that is for strings and songs. We now take preliminal meter. We use the FET, the lesson, gossip, threshold, inescapable confinement, pattern, and confounding parable. When I thought I'd understood, I'd only begun. So we get to do all of that fun two more times. <laughs> And again, we can basically take uh, strings and uh, strings and songs uh, hot off the presses, as it were. Oh, okay. Well, fear uh, helps me with ragged crossroads. Fair enough. I might actually be able to take the contradiction overnight with me because of the moon. No, the moon doesn't work. Night has fallen, dawn will come soon. So I might be down the metal tomorrow. Actually, you know what? We'll go down the core, I think. Skill is now level seven. Its power aspects have also increased. As you used to say in my youth, the day is done and so am I, but I've earned my pay. And those indignities perpetrated by the deceitful fraternity of Obliviates. It is not clear whether CROD, who was identified only by his initials, was in fact an initiate of the Obliviate Order of Immortal Adepts. He wrote in the 16th century after the Order, if he is to be believed, had passed the height of its power. 58. That they did claim inheritance of the traditions of the House of Leith, but that they have disregarded both its most sacred and most beautiful ceremonies where they are not found convenient. 59. 71. The glass finger toxin is no mere assassin's convenience for the obliv idiots to confine to the disposal of their enemies. It has higher uses! Certainly, it is a great matter of winter, but I have already outlined the technique by which it may be fitted for its ultimate destiny. Uh, so yes, we will settle the ragged crossroads before I do anything else. So this will eventually be level three. Let's move that into position. Doesn't really matter if it's fear or contradiction at this point, but I will use the fear because that's something that Mrs. Kill can potentially generate. And again, my expectation here is that the core is not going to make it to dawn, but we have more than one core, so it's not um, it's not a major hardship. Uh, the regret. Okay, so this is the real shame here. Um, we, if we had a wist or if we had an Arab, we actually would have been able to finish off. Um, the uh, the ragged crossroads, but that's fine. We'll you know we'll finish off the cheerful ditty. We'll only have one more thing to do with the ragged crossroads, and the majority of our attention will definitely be on preliminal meter.
The skill is now level two. Its power aspects have also increased. So we take strings and songs. Lesson, satisfaction, storm, cheerful, ditty, and sunny. We add the core for the effort. So satisfying to have come so far. And then the final step, of course, is to try and preserve something overnight. Although I imagine the only use for any of these memories uh, would be as an input to something else. Although I can see myself trying to turn the moth into a curious hunch tomorrow. Let's maybe set that up. So the other question that I have is, do I want to bring in Reverend Timothy tomorrow? Um, because it really only involves two elements of the soul. And I would still be able to do most of what I want to do um, with Mrs. Kill. Yeah, we're down the core, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say we'll use the core to bring in Mrs. Kill. Mrs. Kill's mood always improves when I drop by. We're also going to go to the rectory for, Ms. for Reverend Timothy. Reverend Timothy enjoys thoughtful conversation, prayer, and tea. He'll offer his assistance in return for a one shilling donation to church funds. We do appreciate the contribution. We don't know what weather is going to be coming up. But here's what I'm thinking. The shaft is actually going to be in pretty high demand today. But here's what I get to do. So... For the Ragged Crossroads, we just need one of the elements of the soul that has edge. So here we go. There's the Arab right there. For Preliminal Meter, we're going to need either Knock or Rose. Well, it seems to me like Fett is a natural candidate there, right? So now we've got the Metal, the Shap, the Trist, and the Wist to work with. So for remembering what our goals for the day are... In order to level up Reverend Timothy, we want a Shaft, Newman, and um, Sacrament Assite. So the easiest thing that I can do is right at the start, we'll use this Newman with Reverend Timothy, and then we will regenerate the inescapable confinement. So I'm actually going to do that right now. Uh, where is it? Not this room. Uh, then we get the usual suspects from our other uh, our other books. So for that, we would use the pattern. I know I'm going a little bit over, but I'd like to keep this... I'd, I'd kind of like to have this all set up for the next day. Uh, salt. Newman's already on the way. Secret threshold. That's always going to be an almanac of entrances. Founding parable, which I forgot uh, to use last time. Now, uh, I do need to wait for the so I have an idea here about this curious hunch. So if we use the impulse, we'll use the shaft here. Now we are still going to want to use that with Reverend Timothy, but um, I've not forgotten that. But what I can do here, because we're not going to be using the preliminal meter right away. Oh yeah, actually that's a piece of cake. So I was thinking we could maybe try uh, try something else, but yeah, this is this is fine. And then what I'll do is I'll restore the shaft uh, in time, like before Reverend Timothy opens the relevant um, area. So really, we only have a Triss to kind of kick around right now, which again, it's fine. That's that's by design. 
Um, although what I am going to do is I will restore the core. Yeah, because the... Um, that'll just give me something. I can either keep cycling it through the, uh, the sweet bones, uh, or I can... Uh, I can use it to generate another memory when the time comes. Mrs. Kill stands ready to help. You always cheer me up, she says morosely, and I do appreciate the contribution. Reverend Timothy, rector of Brand Krug, ordained by the Church of the Unconquered Son, a learned man, blessed in the tally, the gate, and the light. So, we are going to talk with him about inescapable confinement, because this is the sort of thing that I am likely to forget. I can discuss a memory with my assistant. So again, the thing that's worth remembering here is after the Newman, uh, we're going to talk with him about the sacrament Asight. So that's a minute spoken for. Um, and then at that point, I'm actually going to use Mrs. Kill. I'm going to keep talking with her for a while. And then when I'm able to get the shaft back, that's when I will uh, use him to open up the slithering fountain. So he's just going to be hanging around for a little while. But again, we're, we're fine. That is by design. We've got a plan for that. The bigger question is going to be whether or not I can get the ragged crossroads leveled up. I suspect I will. And if it really comes down to it, I would be able to use like the old wound and uh, I'm sure I could pick up, you know, something uh, something else to make this work. I'd be reluctant to use the Wormwood Dream, but I don't think it's going to be that hard to find a second um, Winter or, or Edge memory. At that point, we use the Arab, and, at, and the, rest of the, the rest of the season is spent leveling up Preliminal Meter, which we're kind of already on the way to doing. Uh, the whole point of getting all of these um, are to you know, to make sure that we're we're ready to go. Um, I did set aside two FET just in case I got very lucky with my um, Elements of the Soul, but in reality, this is probably going to be my second. Like, this this more or less is guaranteeing me my Ragged Crossroads. Um, but again, we'll see how the, we'll see how the day goes. Um, and if we have spare time at the end of, of the season, what I will probably do is I'll start properly working on my to-do list. So I think I'll catalog the books first, then we'll open the packages, and depending on, you know, depending on, on where the rest of the... basically where the rest of this stuff falls, um, I'll decide, okay, maybe it's time to read some more books, or maybe we'll worry about, you know, getting, getting some nice inputs to the different things I want. Again, there's lots of options available to me. And uh, part of part of this organization is about uh, preserving options. But that is it for this week. Thank you, everybody, for watching. I always look forward to recording these, so I'm very glad that uh, there's enough of you to to keep watching to make this worthwhile. Um, and uh, I guess the last thing to say is I hope you all have a very enjoyable weekend, and I look forward to seeing you next Monday for more Book of Hours. Until then, take care. <laughs>